the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Get your accredited master's degree today with Bayan in Islamic theology, Islamic leadership, Islamic chaplaincy, or Islamic studies. This top tier institution opens the possibility of studying with renowned faculty members from around the world who are traditionally trained alongside practitioners and academics from prestigious Western institutions and all under one roof. Study each semester for one to two weeks on campus and finish the rest of your coursework online. The students here at Bayan are actually teachers. They taught me a lot. I mean, I, I benefited from the discussion more than I really thought I would. I mean, each person brought a very unique perspective. Join our growing network of students and graduates serving the needs of our communities as imams, leaders, chaplains, scholars, and the educators of tomorrow. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala wa baraka ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alimu al-hakim. And welcome back again to our program in this month of Ramadan. Our common humanity. And in the last few days, we have talked about the importance of fasting and how fast basically teaches us to become a better human being. And in fact, the whole ideas of Islam and fasting and ibadat is about turning us into a better human being. And therefore, I would like to emphasize on the importance of struggling and the importance of striving to become a better human being after ending the month of Ramadan. If you see the whole rituals in Al Islam, all ibadat, either it is salat or fasting or zakat or hajj or qiyamul layl, adhkar, and all these rituals in Al Islam, which are very, very much important to practice. They are all intended to bring us into a better human character. And that's what we call as al-akhlaq al karima Akhlaq, noble human character, is the essential purpose of al-ibadat in al-Islam. Of course, when we do our salat, I will hope that Allah will reward us. When you do our fasting, we hope and pray that Allah will reward us. And that's what we need in order to enter into the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one thing we have to remember that before talking about Jannah, there is an important process that we have to go through. And that process is how to implement the values, the meanings of rituals that we do in our daily life. For example, when you talk about fasting, one of the most important meanings of fasting is to restrain. And that is al-imsak. Al-imsak means to control, to restrain, to abstain. And it means that while we are fasting, we are training ourselves to be able to control our human desire. And as you mentioned repeatedly in the past that human desires are necessary because no one can build this world without human desire. No one can build tallest buildings in Manhattan without human desire. No one can continue the generations without desire. Only because of those, because of the desire, 
that people marry, for example, in order to continue our human generation. So desires are necessary, fundamentally needed in order for us to function as human beings here in this world. But unfortunately, unfortunately, many people, instead of using their desires to develop their life, to benefit their life, to build this dunya as a better, to be better a place for everyone to live, they are being used by the desire. They are being enslaved by the desire. And therefore, the Holy Quran reminds us, Araita man ittakhada ilahahu haya, hawa. O Muhammad have seen the person who had made his ahwa, his desire as Lord beside Allah. How many people are worshipping their desire? They follow their desire blindly. And that is because their desires are so powerful and they are so weak in controlling those powerful desires. Here, my brothers and sisters, we see how fast fasting is necessary because fasting is a real training for us to fight against, against that bad desire, to fight against that bad whims. Therefore, we keep aside our food, we keep aside our drink, we keep aside our enjoyments of this, this dunya in order to strengthen our spirituality, to empower our ruh, so that we can be strong enough in facing the temptations of our desire. The ayah in the Holy Quran explains how those people who cannot control the desires are being destructive. Many destructions, many mischief, many wrong things happens in this world because people simply cannot control themselves. So look at, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nazi'at, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فإذا جاءت الطامة الكبرى when the big dooms will arrive will come يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى on that day the people will remind will remember what they have done وبرزت الجحيم لمن يرى and جهنم is shown to those who can see it فأما من طغى for whoever transgresses, it means the people who cannot control themselves, the people who cannot control the desire. And they prefer this worldly life more. It means that among the signs of those people who cannot control their desire, that this dunya is too much beloved to them. They are, con they are collecting money, collecting materials every day and night, day and hour nothing but money nothing but materials what happened to them for in jahima here at the end the destiny will be jahim the destiny will be jahannam and if you see brothers and sisters before talking about jahannams in the day of judgment the real jahannam we have seen a lot of jahims a lot of jahannams in our life people are fighting one another people are you know, becoming greedy more and more. People are becoming abusive. Why? Because people are so materialistic. And the rich are becoming richer. And the poor are becoming weaker. They are weakened by the system, for example. Because that's what it's all about. It's about human greed. So what the Quran says next, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَا قَامَ رَبِّهِ But for the one who fears the greatness of his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and control himself from falling into the entrapment of human desire, falling into the entrapment of desire. The result will be Jannah. The result will be paradise. And again, before talking about Jannah, the real Jannah in Akhirah, it is our responsibility to establish minor jannah, small paradise on this land, on this planet. And it is only possible when we are fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have the al-khawf bi maqamillahi azza wa jal, that we are fearing the greatness of Allah and controlling wanahan nafsa, we control our desires, we control our tendency of falling into the enslavement of our own desire.
And what is the Jannah that we can see? Baldatun tayyibatun wa rabbun ghafur. We can create a very beautiful balda. For those who are living in a country, you can create a beautiful country, strong, powerful, prosperous country, just country. All these are because of what? al khawfu min Allah Azza wa Jal. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we don't have fear of Allah and we cannot control our desire, and then we can fall into the entrapment of our own desires. Here, brothers and sisters, fasting is very important and necessary. Because once again, when it is defined, that when fasting is defined, al-imsaku anit ta'ami wa sharabi, and that is to restrain from food and drink, it means that we are teaching and training ourselves to control that human desire. So here fasting is playing an important role on how to play and again control that desire. And only through that controlling the desire, we can build this dunya as a better place for everyone to live. So brothers and sisters, as we are entering into the eight days, we are going to finish the eight days of Ramadan. I hope and pray that our fasting is not, not only about leaving the food behind, leaving our drink behind, ignoring our worldly enjoyment, but more important that we have to learn. We have to turn this month into a madrasa, a month of learning. We are learning to control our desire. We are learning to have a right direction in life. In other words, that month of Ramadan must be the month of transformation. It is not only a month of, of traditional thing that we do, every year and that is everybody is, is abstaining from food and drink and then ramadan comes and goes looks like nothing happens afterwards the result can be positive when we understand that the month of ramadan is the month of learning we learn and we teach ourselves to be better human beings because at the end of the day there are some people who may who may observe fasting but they don't have anything but hunger and thirst. There might be a fasting person, but he doesn't get anything from his fasting except hunger and thirst. Why? Because they don't increase in their human character. They don't increase in their akhlaq as Islam wants us to be. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us and may our fast can lead us into a better human character to become uh, a person, a Muslim that have beautiful human character so that people can see us as a great people, great Muslims, insha'Allah ta'ala. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, get your accredited master's degree today with Bayan in Islamic theology, Islamic leadership, Islamic chaplaincy, or Islamic studies. This top-tier institution opens the possibility of studying with renowned faculty members from around the world who are traditionally trained, alongside practitioners and academics from prestigious Western institutions and all under one roof. Study each semester for one to two weeks on campus and finish the rest of your coursework online. The students here at Bayam are actually teachers. They taught me a lot. I mean, I, I benefited from the discussion more than I really thought I would. I mean, each person brought a very unique perspective. Join our growing network of students and graduates serving the needs of our communities as imams, leaders, chaplains, scholars, and the educators of tomorrow. Call of Peace, Save Humanity.